The Victorian goldfields is filled with fascinating ruins and relics, where abandoned mines, old diggings, boilers, machinery foundations and gold puddlers are scattered in abundance throughout the region. I've gathered together this list of the best abandoned mine sites where you can safely explore and learn about this remarkable aspect of our local heritage. Jubilee Mine in Staffordshire Reef The extensive ruins of the Jubilee Company Quartz Gold Mine are an interesting place to explore. This significant site is nestled away within the beautiful forest of the Jubilee Historic Area, just half an hour from Ballarat. A fantastic self-guided walk takes you around the site of the Jubilee Company Quartz Gold Mine. Features you will discover along the walk include battery foundations, engine beds, a water race, old mine shafts, surface workings, cyanide plant, tailings, old house sites and more. Illustrated signposts provide lots of information along the way. The Garfield Water Wheel in Tewton Visit the Garfield Water Wheel historical site in Tewton and explore the ruins and remnants of the Garfield Company mine. The massive stone abutments which still remain at the site once supported an enormous water wheel with a diameter of 22 metres. Upon its construction, the Garfield water wheel was hailed as the largest in the southern hemisphere. The water wheel was used between 1887 and 1903 to power the stamp battery for the mine. Today visitors can explore many fascinating features of the Garfield mine site by taking a short self-guided walk which travels around the area. An information sign alongside the parking area provides a map and numbered features along the way. The Alma Lead Cyanide Works in Bowen Vale The Gladstone Bushland Reserve lies alongside Gladstone Road in Bowen Vale and is home to the historic Alma Lead Cyanide Works. This interesting reserve features rows of cyanide vats, multiple dams, the closed remains of shafts and mullock heaps. This reserve is also home to the intriguing Queen Tree. The Red, White and Blue Mine in Muckleford The Red, White and Blue Mine in the Muckleford State Forest is an interesting place for a barbecue and a bushwalk. The historic mine is a great place to check out where you'll discover a poppet head, a huge mine shaft, machinery site, mullock heap and dams. This poppet head was originally from the Bendigo Deborah United Mine. Forest Creek Historic Diggings in Castlemaine Bring a picnic lunch and take an easy stroll through the Forest Creek Historic Gold Diggings, exploring many historical features of this world-renowned alluvial goldfield. At this site during the gold rush, miners sought to strike their fortunes from the gravels of an ancient riverbed, a former course of Forest Creek which formed millions of years ago. Miners continued to work this site for gold well into the 20th century. This is a great place to see the dramatic effects of hydraulic sluicing. The Grand Duke Mine in Timor the Grand Duke Mine site in Timor is a brilliant example of a deep lead gold mine. Wander around the site and take a closer look at the impressive stone arch, which is all that remains of the pump house which used to remove water from this mine. Mining in this area was both difficult and dangerous due to the groundwater, with the water table sitting a mere 40 feet below the surface. To overcome this issue, a massive Cornish pumping engine was imported from England and mounted on the arch we see here today. Boxing Reef Mine Shafts in Stieglitz Three old mine shafts sit in a grassy field, surrounded by a quaint picket fences and adding to the town's gorgeous historical charm. 19th century miners sank these shafts deep underground to reach the prosperous Boxing Reef. Today the remains of these mine shafts make up part of the fascinating Stieglitz Town Walk. This is an easy half hour circuit filled with the interesting ruins, relics and buildings of the Gold Rush era. This walk begins around the corner at the courthouse and is an excellent way to explore this unique little town. The Central Nell Gwyn Poppet Head in Bendigo The Poppet Head of the Central Nell Gwyn Mine is an iconic landmark in Bendigo. The Central Nell Gwyn was the premier mine of Bendigo's 1930s mining revival and is of high historical value due to the extensive and relatively intact features which remain at the site. The impressive Poppet Head stands alongside a gravel parking area. Constructed of steel, the Poppet Head has been restored and painted. You will also find extensive remnants of the mine's machinery foundations. Old Tom Mine in Whipstick The Old Tom Mine site lies within the Greater Bendigo National Park and is marked with a sign in the bush off Old Tom Road and the area is filled with remnants of a range of mining activity. This spot is best reached either on foot from Eaglehawk Neilborough Road or with a four-wheel drive vehicle on the narrow and uneven dirt track which travels directly past the mine site. The New Australasian No. 2 Gold Mine in Creswick 
The new Australasian No. 2 Deep Lead Gold Mine in Creswick is the scene of one of Australia's worst underground mining disasters. On the 11th of December 1882, 41 men entered the new Australasian No. 2 mine to work a seemingly ordinary Monday night shift. In the early hours of the next morning, water flooded the mine from the old workings of the Australasian No. 1, trapping 27 of the men underground. Rescue efforts commenced immediately, but by the time the miners were reached three days later, only five had survived. The Beehive Mine in Malden The 30 metre high Beehive Mine chimney is an iconic part of the Malden skyline. Completed in 1863, it's the only chimney of its age and size remaining in Victoria. Visitors can stroll through the mine site of the Beehive Gold Company and take a close look at the chimney and a fenced mine shaft. Alongside the chimney are the interesting remains of the mine's machinery foundations, constructed of brick and stone. The North British Mine and Quartz Kilns in Malden Take a self-guided tour to explore the extensive ruins of the North British Mine and Quartz Kilns. The walk showcases the mine's machinery foundations, cyanide plant, large mine shaft and well-preserved quartz kilns. Seen as a feature of Malden's mining history, quartz kilns were used to roast quartz in preparation for crushing, as it burnt off impurities and made the rock more brittle. The kilns at the North British Mine site are an excellent example of early mining techniques in Malden and are some of the best surviving quartz kilns in Victoria. The Mount Tarangawa Tunnelling Company in Malden The Mount Tarangawa Tunnelling Company commenced work in Malden in 1865 and were the first company in Australia to use compressed, air-driven rock drilling technology. Subsequent widespread adoption of this technology was a milestone in Australian underground mining. There is a short walking track to the Mount Tarangawa Tunnelling Company's mine beginning from the Anzac Hill Road. The Battery Dam and Distillery near Maryborough The Battery Dam historic site is located just outside Maryborough in the Craigie State Forest. The area was used to crush and process quartz from mines in the area. After gold processing operations ceased, some of the equipment was adapted to be used for a eucalyptus distillery. Today it features a picnic area, walking tracks, gold processing and eucalyptus distillery relics, and beautifully illustrated information signs. Tunnel Hill Mine in Talbot The Tunnel Hill Mine lies within the Tunnel Hill Bushland Reserve just outside Talbot, and features an abandoned tunnel running in a straight line beneath a small hill. The mine is locked with gates, but you can get a great view down the tunnel from the outside. The Pink Cliffs Geological Reserve in Heathcote The Pink Cliffs Geological Reserve is a remarkable area on the edge of Heathcote. Once a hydraulic sluicing site, mining activity in the late 19th century washed away the top layer of earth and revealed the dramatic colourful cliffs on display today. Hydraulic sluicing at this site was carried out in the 1870s to the 1880s, under the direction of James Headley, a pioneer in the development of sluicing and dredging in Victoria. A track takes you on an educational circuit walk, showcasing the stunning geological features of the Pink Cliffs Geological Reserve, as well as providing information signs and lookout points along the way. Eureka Reef in Chewton Once a busy mining village, today Eureka contains some of the oldest quartz mining relics in Victoria, as well as remnants of houses, gold batteries, alluvial mining, quartz mining, cyanide treatment and more. Take a walk around the Eureka Reef Gold Mining Precinct and discover the many ruins and features which remain from a century of gold mining operations. The Porcupine Flat Gold Dredge and Drag Line near Malden The Porcupine Flat Gold Dredge and Drag Line is an incredible roadside relic located just outside Malden. A bucket dredge is a machine which excavates riverbeds using steel buckets on a rotating bucket line. The material is processed on board to recover the gold from the gravels. One of only two bucket dredges remaining in Victoria, this steel dredge is an absolute must-see when visiting the area. The Deborah Company Historic Area in Bendigo Visit the Deborah Company Historic Area and explore the ruins and remnants of one of Bendigo's most successful gold mines of the 1930s and 40s. A steel poppet head, concrete engine beds and foundations of a 20-head stamp battery can be seen at the site. A shed containing a five-head stamp battery was relocated to this spot in the mid-90s, having previously served as the Golden Square State Battery. The shed has an open front covered with steel mesh, so visitors can get a close look at the stamp battery inside. The Victoria Hill Mining Reserve in Bendigo Take a walk through the Victoria Hill Mining Reserve and explore the site of what was once Victoria's deepest gold mine. Walking tracks take you on a journey through the area where you'll discover a huge range of ruins and relics. 
Lots of detailed information signs provide the site's history along the way. A huge poppet head has been converted into a lookout platform, a dominant feature of the reserve. Climb up the lookout and take in the beautiful views over Bendigo. While you're up there, see how many other poppet heads you can spot around the town. If you're looking for more information, images and locations for any of these abandoned mine sites, check out the link in the description below. Please note that there are many deep open mine shafts remaining in the bush throughout the goldfields. For your own safety, do not venture off the track or enter any mine tunnels you come across while exploring any of the region's many abandoned mine sites. Head over to the Goldfields Guide website to discover many more amazing places to explore in the Victorian goldfields. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Goldfields Guide on YouTube.